Why, why did you actually cho choose uh, plant pathology? Yeah, that's a good question. There are many different areas I could have picked, uh, but uh, I had a very good professor uh, who taught us how actually plants get sick and like humans, like animals, plants also get a lot of diseases, bacterial diseases, viral diseases, fungal diseases, a myriad of diseases. And if they get sick, then we have no food. Uh, so that was really in a simplified way. That was uh, the reason. And uh, I found it very interesting also, the science of plant pathology, which is uh, diseases of plants. Yeah. You went from um, the USA, did you, you went to the, uh, South America. What did you do in South America? Yeah, so I, I studied in my undergraduate degree in Ethiopia. Then I uh, got scholarship, uh, went to United States. That's what I uh, really wanted to do. And so I studied there and I, had, uh, I did my master's degree and my PhD degree in America. And I had uh, also, after my PhD, I had a job in, uh, as a scientist in, um, in the U.S. in Cornell University. And uh, so after that, I was recruited by an international agricultural research center based in Colombia. So I had never been in Colombia before. The, they approached me to uh, consider a job there. Uh, so. I was employed by the organization as a senior scientist and then I moved now? there in Colombia. Yeah. What did you do in Colombia? In Colombia, so I was a, a senior scientist in charge of uh, diseases of uh, forage plants. And uh, it was a very enjoyable uh, setting, uh, enjoyable job uh, because everything we did was to solve problems for society, particularly for developing countries. And it was a it was a, a great phase for me, and I get to learn a new language, the Spanish. Uh, the people are nice, and the country is beautiful, and I met my husband there also. He was, uh, at the same time, when I was recruited from uh, United States, uh, the same company recruited him also from the Netherlands, from his country, and we met uh, uh, one day apart. We arrived there and uh, one day apart, basically, yeah. So, and then our uh, daughter was uh, also born there in Colombia. So, uh, and uh, both of us also grew as uh, scientists within the organization also. So it was, it was very good. And we, we, uh, I felt we made a, a lot of difference for people. So we were working for uh, basically devel the developing world in South America, in Asia, in Africa, uh, just based uh, in Colombia. Uh, so it was a very good time, yeah. You also educated a lot of Chinese students. Yes. So you became a friend of China. Yes, I did. Um, so I think one of the exciting things is that um, in uh, that organization, uh, you are a scientist for for any uh, developing country that needs your skills and technologies. So you are not particularly working for just one country or the other. So many different uh, students, graduate students, came to work with me. So among those was many Chinese. So the Chinese uh, were uh, partially funded by their uh, government. So they came to do their uh, research in uh, my laboratory. So they are very hardworking people and I spend a considerable amount of time also training them. Uh, so, so that was my uh, one of the success stories. And I had Colombian students, I had Brazilians, I had many different countries also. So, so. Um, the Chinese, uh, well, it wasn't unnoticed that you educated a lot of Chinese people. You got mm. a, a medal from uh, the Chinese. Yeah. Um, why did you decide to go to Africa then? Yeah, so that was a, that was a turning point for me. So all those uh, years, I was in Colombia for 15 years. 
so uh, I grew as a scientist within the organization. I was promoted also within the organization. Uh, so it was, uh, for my career, it was great. Uh, but at the back of my mind, I was uh, also thinking and um, uh, really contemplating also what is actually my impact for Africa. Uh, coming from a poor, a poor village, uh, knowing how people live, struggle to make and meet. So I, I was always questioning also whether uh, that uh, Colombia needs me more than Africa need, needed me. But I think the turning point came um, in September 2006, as uh, the Chinese uh, gave me uh, their highest award, what they called uh, the French Friendship Award, for uh, the role I, I had played in their agricultural uh, research development um, and impact, uh, basically through the, the graduate students I trained, who, have, who had become very successful scientists back in China. So at the ceremony, there was a big ceremony there, and uh, on the stage, um, when it was announced that I'm from Ethiopia and I have made this, this contribution to China, so it was, uh, it was not a proud moment for me. It was uh, almost, I was embarrassed. Here I was from a poor country, and I was getting a medal, a gold medal from the premier of China for impact made in China. And I was questioning whether on the stage like, does actually China need me more than Africa? So, uh, so that was the, the stage actually, on the stage right there, I decided, okay, I'm going back to Africa. So, I, yeah. You became finally in Africa yeah. um, director of this Insect Institute. Um, mm. Why an Insect Institute? Yeah. Yeah. So when I, uh, I came back to Africa, I, I, I was not immediately uh, the, the head of this institute. Uh, so I, I was recruited by another international organization based here in Nairobi to uh, build, establish the Agricultural Biotechnology Center for Africa, uh, funded by the Canadian government. So it was a tough job, a tough uh, task, but uh, it gave me opportunity to do something from scratch for Africa. So I did that for five and a half years, established the center, uh, became a very successful center. Uh, I raised a lot of money, um, trained, uh, set up the program and so on. So then I was approached by another organization if I could take the position of uh, vice president for programs. So I accepted that, uh, but it was not a research organization, so I, I was not, um, I wanted to go back into the research organization. So this then, uh, this opportunity came uh, to head uh, ECP, the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology. So I accepted that, uh, so it is a, a a perfect place for me, uh, with perfect programs for Africa. So why insects? So people often ask me, uh, wow, the whole organization for just insects? Uh, and why insects? That's what people ask. Huh? But um, yeah, this is a unique organization. Uh, I think as far as I know, the only organization that deals 100% on insects. Uh, because insects are extremely important in our lives. They are by far the most diverse and the most uh, abundant animals on, on, on Earth. They play uh, various roles in our lives. They, if you take bees, they play a critical role in pollinating our crops. So if uh, bees have to disappear tomorrow, our food source would be in big, big trouble. Uh, so, uh, so they they pollinate our co crops like bees. Uh, insects also play a critical role as food source, food uh, for humans and feed for um, animals. So about 
two billion people in, 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 in Africa, Latin America, Asia consume insects as a source of protein. Uh, so I believe this is also actually a source that has to be mainstreamed all across, I think, the globe as a, a good source of high quality protein. Um, so also bees uh, give us also uh, a lot of things, f uh, food, feed, uh, I mean uh, insects, uh, um, wax, um, a range of things. Insects also, they they have also ecologically also there are insects that control other harmful insects also. Insects play a role also in degrading waste, uh, um, plant waste, uh, animal waste and so on. So in, in fact if we don't have insects our world it would be a lot of critical, I mean really mess uh, with a lot of garbage, uh, a lot of waste that we put which is not being degraded by, by some microbes and, and insects so but unfortunately we also that insects also uh, are harmful to also to humans animals to crops they transmit a lot of diseases uh, small things like mosquitoes kill more people than uh, every day than uh, you know global conflicts uh, put together uh, so it uh, it hurts me to think like uh, with all the technologies we have, uh, humans going, mankind going to the moon, uh, going to space and so on, we are unable to defeat a tiny mosquito to uh, to kill. Every 80 seconds in Africa, uh, children die from from malaria, uh, from um, also a lot of uh, uh, mosquito transmitted diseases, dengue, uh, dengue and yellow fever and a lot of diseases come through uh, that, uh, transmitted uh, through insects. Uh, the same for animal diseases also, uh, a wide range of uh, animal diseases tra are transmitted uh, through insects also. So, uh, so climate change, uh, climate change is an issue. A recent report, for example, says by the World Bank uh, just came out. Uh, if uh, we don't do deal with climate change, uh, by 2030, 100 million more people would go into poverty. So I think, uh, I believe personally that I think one of the biggest impacts of climate change is going to be insects also. So insects are going to, as the world gets warmer, insects are going to shift also to warmer uh, uh, places. So. A lot of African uh, problems are going to be also problems somewhere else, as it gets warm. So it's uh, if we have to de to make uh, the planet uh, livable for us in the many years ahead, if we have to uh, manage our food security, nutritional security, if we have to develop the 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 planet, uh, we have to deal also with insects. Both the, the benefits and the harmful part of the of what insects provide. Yeah. Are people aware somehow of this wide variety of properties that insects have? Yeah. Um, no, unfortunately not. Uh, I think we have to make people aware of, of, of that. I think we have to teach. Uh, could you, could you, would you mind repeating my question? Sort of, um, yeah. because otherwise you answer it. <coughs> Yes or no? Um, yeah. So, so, do you think are people aware somehow uh, of the wide variety of properties? You think? Yeah. Um, no, I think people are not aware of of uh, all this variety of issues associated with insects. So, for example, if you take bees, almost everybody uh, knows that honey comes from bees, but a lot of people don't know that bees are critical also for food security. They pollinate crops. Without bees, and you don't have enough. In, in some of the plants, they, they require pollination by, by crops, by bees. Uh, so, no, people don't know a lot, of, a lot about, uh, about this. And, and I think we have to teach it in school, in elementary school, in uh, high school, in universities. 
and I think in the general public also to be aware of what insects uh, do for uh, for people. Yeah. Are, there, are there other properties you think that are very beneficial for um, insects? I mean, in terms of pharmaceutical uh, properties or anything they they do well for us? Yeah, uh, yeah. Insects play also other roles. Uh, for example, there are. Uh, Insects that are uniquely found antibiotics, uh, insects that uniquely produce or have antibiotics, for example. Shall, shall we do it again? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay, can you mention some other, well, quite unique properties that we are not very aware of? Yeah. Um, insects have a number of other uses as well. For example, the antibiotics for people, for animals. Um, I don't think uh, we have investigated enough the unique antibiotics that exist in insects. Uh, there are also um, other things that, uh, for example, this insect called soldier fly. They are very good in, in processing a lot of waste uh, and converting them into fertilizer. So. Uh, yeah, there, there is a wide variety of use that we can make out of out of uh, out of insects. I think yeah. some of the airplane uh, uh, helicopter design comes also from from insect uh, insect architecture. Yeah. yeah. What is the uniqueness of your institute? Yeah, I think the uniqueness for me of this of ECP is. Um, one, it is um, focused on really solving uh, agricultural and health constraints in, in Africa. But what we produce is not just unique for Africa, it can be used globally. Uh, it is also, we also uh, focus on very environmentally friendly and sustainable technologies and products. We have, for example, over the years generated biopesticides, pesticides that uh, come naturally from a naturally existing fungus, and, and we manage uh, um, insects, uh, beneficial, not beneficial, harmful insects. Uh, so these products now are uh, commercialized together with, uh, in partnership with the private sector. And so it's registered now, um, they are registered in many countries in Africa, and currently they are being registered also in the European Union. So what we produce, very environmentally friendly, not contaminating the environment, not harming other uh, beneficial insects. Uh, so it's not only just useful for Africa, but this can be used anywhere else as well, in Europe and North America. So we are unique in such that we, we focus on technologies and products that are environmentally friendly and that, uh, that are also sustainable for uh, a long term also. And that keeps a natural equilibrium also, yeah. How important is, is your institute for Africa, maybe for the world? How would you describe that? I think it's very, very important. I think I, I often ask um, my staff that if we cease to exist tomorrow, would people line up asking for reopening of uh, ECP? And the answer is constantly yes, because we, we are making a, a, a major impact all across Africa. And we are focused on major constraints, constraints that are really uh, uh, are uh, impediment for agricultural and health uh, issues. So uh, it's, it's a very important organization for, for, uh, for the continent and, and globally as well. Yeah. Uh, why is it in Africa? Why is it in Africa? Yeah. Uh, good question. Uh, ICP is in Africa because it was founded by an African. It was uh, founded 45 years ago in 1970 by a very renowned uh, entomologist, insect scientist, uh, uh, a, a professor, uh, uh, a Kenyan professor. 
So it was founded as, uh, as an international center, a small center within a university, and it expanded. It expanded and uh, so today we have multiple nationalities of scientists and technical staff. And, uh, uh, and, and, may, and reaching out uh, across Africa and making it back. And what I like about the organization is also that research, yeah, we do cutting edge uh, research. We do, um, we make uh, major breakthroughs. We publish in high quality journals internationally. But all that uh, work is also with the aim to translate it to impact. There's nothing we do which is not either short term or middle term or long term, is not translated to impact and products that reach the, the end user, which is the farmers and the beneficiaries in Africa and beyond. So, uh, so this really, truly uh, making science uh, to work for, 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 for people, for society. Can you describe how important insects are for the future of humanity? Yeah, excellent. A very good question. Yeah, I think insects are really important for all our lives. Uh, bees, I think bees. Uh, Europe and North America already knows now because the bee population is going declining. Already knows that uh, this is a problem unless we, we solve this, unless we take care of the, the health of the bees. Um, so that one, I think it goes without say that if bees, if they don't exist today, tomorrow we are in trouble. Uh, so uh, that, that, that has to go on uh, for the future. Uh, I think for the future also that if we have to diversify our food, food uh, source, feed source, and um, quality of protein, I think uh, we have to mainstream also the use of insects as, as food. Uh, so there, is, there are a variety, more than uh, 2,000 species of insects are consumed globally. About a third of them uh, in, in Africa. So people consume them, uh, they go to the forest, they collect them seasonally. Uh, often it is women and children who are tasked, given these tasks to go to the forest and collect the insects. But so sometimes when you collect also that you are going to, there is a tendency also to over harvest. And then you can cause some of these insects have also a role in balancing the, the, the atmosphere, the equilibrium. So, and um, ECP has the technology the capability to mass rear a lot of these species of insects. Huh? So, but I think we have to change uh, the perception of people uh, globally uh, that uh, that insects, I mean, consuming insects is not something uh, out of the ordinary. If two billion people have successfully been traditionally consuming them, it, we have to do it uh, mainstream also. So the conversion rate also of feed and uh, insect uh, protein is, is a lot more efficient in, in, in insects. So with a, a very limited amount of feed substrate to insects, you can get high quality protein compared to the same quality protein in, in beef, in, in cotton. So for climate change, uh, also mitigation for, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, so I think uh, insects are more, are more uh, compatible, I think, uh, more sustainable. W one of your uh, um, research is actually published an article about locusts. You could better eat a locust than eat the food they eat. Yeah. Well, can you explain that? What, what, what did you... Yeah, so we, we have been working on, um, on uh, the various insects, also the uh, protein and nutritional profile of these insects also a number of insects that are being consumed traditionally. So we found that a lot of these insects actually have um, higher or equivalent uh, content of uh, nutrition and protein to uh, f equivalent to fish and to beef. So that is a good finding. Locusts, uh, so we uh, published recently about two months ago a paper 
a very exciting finding. So locusts are really uh, big pests. They go and they can in they storm and they can completely wipe your crop in, in an overnight. They consume a lot of greenery uh, crops or any vegetation. But but people also consume them traditionally also in many parts of Africa and elsewhere. Yeah? So but what we found is that uh, locusts are the that in uh, laboratory setting that are fed on um, wheat seedlings. They, 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 they convert the, the wheat seedlings may have very minute amount of sterols. These are chemicals that are very useful to, to our health. They uh, reduce cholesterol, they do a lot of, they have a lot of benefit to our health. And so the locusts they consume and then they have, we don't know the mechanism there yet, they have the capacity to convert this uh, sterols 20 to 40 fold. So if you have diet, locust based diet, all across in your life incorporated into your diet, that the chance of you having a cholesterol or other heart problem is much, much lower. So this is a, an amazing uh, uh, finding. So I think if more and more, if we find the, the, the beneficial effect of the health, beneficial effect of insects as, as food, I think the, the perception of people also will change in, on incorporating insects into their diets. So. What will insect research do for the future of Africa? Yeah, um, I think if we have effective uh, effectively understand and we are constantly understanding the insects, their physiology, their ecology, their, their mechanism, how they transmit diseases, how they, they are, they are fascinating uh, uh, creatures, uh, creatures. And if we understand it our, uh, better, if we know, then we identify then several cycles in their life cycle, several spots where the, the weak spots where we can manage. So I think we, ca we have to eradicate malaria. So why can't we with all this technology, not just us, but the global scientific com community? Why can't we eradicate dengue? Why, why can't we eradicate uh, sese flies that are causing a lot of uh, problems both in humans and in animals? Uh, so, so I think if we tackle all this, I think the, the future of Africa will be bright. It will be less, less problem to deal with. So a lot of the problems that you, you find in Africa, they are, they are actually manageable. We can manage them. We, we can tackle them. Uh, so it's not, it's not uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we regularly um, make breakthroughs. We, uh, recently, that, uh, a young group of scientists at ICP in my organization, they, they discovered that certain mosquitoes a certain population of the mosquitoes that transmit malaria, about a very small portion of them, we don't know why, they, they harbor bacteria in their body. So those mosquitoes that harbor uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, bacteria, they, they are unable to transmit the malaria parasite. That is a major, major discovery. So what we, we have to, well, what we are doing is that why, why, what does, what do these bacteria do to these insects, making them resistant and incapable of transmitting the, the malaria transmitting uh, uh, the, the, the malaria parasite. And why only a certain population, a certain percentage of the, the mosquito have it. So if we know that, and if we are able to to transmit this bacteria to a wider range of the, the mosquito uh, population, it is possible to significantly reduce uh, the malaria tra transmission. So there is a lot of things we can do and, and, we, and, and, and make, a, make a difference in, in Africa and elsewhere. Yeah. People I talk to say you are in a hurry. What do they mean? <laughs> I'm in a hurry. I'm, I'm in a hurry. I'm very impatient. Um, yeah, because I think, um, and I, I, 
If you talk to my staff also, they will tell you the same thing. I'm in a hurry, I'm, uh, I'm pushing constantly. I'm impatient. Uh, that is because I think we have to live our lives with a sense of urgency. Because every day we live that uh, tomorrow we have now, we are ab about to finish today. Tomorrow we have one day less than the, our life, our uh, lifetime. So, which means that we are not getting younger. So we have to rush in to make sure that we have actually make a, a difference in people's lives, that we have lived also our lives with a purpose. So I think we shouldn't, I don't feel that I have to live for myself. No, I shouldn't live for myself. I should feel a sense of responsibility for my other fellow human beings. And so, uh, so that's why I'm in a hurry. I'm really in a hurry, yeah. So so what's the goal? I want to do, I want to do uh, something. I want to make uh, a difference for people. I want to, uh, to solve uh, uh, problems for, for people who are not uh, able to, to solve it themselves. And I think we are fortunate as a scientist, I'm fortunate that I'm given this uh, priceless knowledge and education, so I have to use it uh, to not use it to publish a paper, but only to really to use to, to solve uh, uh, people's problems. Yeah. What, what can science do for Africa in this respect? Oh, science can do a lot of things for uh, Africa and for uh, the rest of the world. I think uh, we should we should be able to find solution for all our ill illings for our. We should be uh, finding vaccine for malaria. We should be finding vaccine for HIV AIDS. We should be uh, defeating cancer. So that's all possible, I think. Uh, so uh, science can do a lot of different things too for people and for the planet, yeah. What can Africa do for science? Africa can do a lot of things for science. I think that's an excellent question that no one has ever asked me. I think governments have to value the science technology is really important for the continent development for the people. So they have to value that, uh, they have to invest significant proportion of their, their uh, resources to, to science and technology and to other areas. Because I think the difference between my country and your country, which is my husband's country, is really, it's not a difference in our color, it's not a difference in, uh, in the location where we are, it's a difference of capability. Uh, and education, that and investment and uh, capability, capacity of people to innovate, capacity of people to absorb new technologies and to invent uh, a lot of different things. We, if we don't do that, if Africa doesn't do that, it's never going to solve a lot of our problems. So how is it that the Netherlands, which has a miserable weather, uh, and uh, can produce a lot of uh, food, not only for its people, but I think can produce a, lo a lot. And we have this beautiful weather, beautiful sunshine, and, and uh, a lot of resources, water and everything else, and we are not feeding ourselves. So uh, it is, again, a capability, I think, a issue for, for me, yeah. And, and knowledge and and technology, and I think Africa has to do that to, to, uh, to increase it, to enhance its ability to do. Yeah. What, what can your institute uh, do for Africa? We do, uh, uh, ECP does a lot of things uh, uh, for Africa. Uh, so we, in line with what I have just said, uh, we believe capacity is very critical. Capacity at the end of the day, Capacity is development. Development is all about capacity of people. So we have a very large uh, capacity building uh, unit. So every year we receive 100 to 150 graduate students all across Africa. Uh, they, they do, they do, they do master, their master's degree, their PhD degree. 
and uh, so and and then we train them. They are registered in many different universities, but they do the research at this space. And so we are enhancing the scientific capability of uh, of, uh, uh, of many African countries on, in insect science. Um, but also we train also a lot of uh, farmers in different things. We we uh, train in. Um, in uh, the technologies that they adapt from us uh, and, and so on. So like this year from January until October, 10, 10 months, yeah? Is it 10, yeah, 10 months that we, we trained more than 10,000 people in various different technologies. So this is a, a big, and, and we are a relatively small organization, okay? So I think this is a big contribution. So we, we also, uh, uh, yeah, our our products go all across Africa. Uh, technologies they go. Uh, so one of the things which is uh, difficult for us is to scale out the technologies to reach as many people as we can. So for example, we have uh, the technologies you are going to visit tomorrow in the field. is a uh, is an absolutely fabulous technology uh, uh, invented, created by and developed by ICP and um, its partners. But this is a, a technology that is really needed all across Africa. But, be, but we are reaching uh, only 10 to 20,000 people, farmers per year. But the technology is needed by millions of farmers. Uh, so now we are changing our model and partnering with governments and with NGOs and with the private sector to take the technology and to accelerate it in many different uh, countries. So, uh, yeah, this was... Uh, you will, you like to defend this case to many people and, and, and share your thoughts with wherever you can share because you also go to the president of your country or... Yeah, so, so yeah, it's, it's very important. We are not... Um, it's very important for us to work with the governments and to fit also with, the, with their own also strategic plan also. So uh, we cannot just work in isolation. So the Ethiopian government has, for example, it has a very clear strategy, development plan. So they took a number of our uh, uh, products and technologies and they fit them into their, into their strategy. So they, for one of our technologies, for example, they, they have a plan to reach minimum of 20,000 farmers with that technology a year. Uh, so they are going to expand it themselves, I think, once you give them. And we do the technical backstopping because it's a very knowledge-intensive technology. So you have to train farmers how to, to, to use it, but uh, it's a fabulous technology. And beekeeping also that uh, they utilize beekeeping and um, silk farming, anything insects that we work on. Silk farming also is very needed. So it's not just only food security, but also income generation. To, you want to improve the livelihood of people in various ways. It's not just only producing more food and, and that's it. But you want also to diversify their income, reduce uh, the, the risk mitigation. So if you have a diverse income, uh, you, are, you are not dependent on one. So you are reducing the, the risk also, yeah. So, what would be your ultimate scientific goal? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a, that's a big question. I think I have many goals, but I will make it a, a more doable one. So, I think so. tomorrow you would see this field visit. Um, in the field, one of the critical, critical problems in across Africa in many countries is a, a parasitic weed called Striga. It is a, a parasite on many cereal crops, on rice, on maize, on sorghum, on millet, all the staples that people need, eh? the staple food. And uh, basically this is a parasitic weed, it attaches itself uh, to the roots of the, its host, is a maize or sorghum or whatever. It takes all the nutrients out from this. It cannot live without, without that uh, host. And basically, it ruins a crop. So if you have that, it also 
produces a lot of seeds, like thousands of seeds, tiny seeds, and it sheds into the soil. And so once you have that, it is really, the soil is basically unusable. So we have a technology that can eradicate that. So what I really would like to see in my lifetime is eradicating this uh, weed from all across Africa. And it's possible. We have the technology. What is needed is to scale it out, to get a large like, a number of partners and, and funders to say, OK, we are out to eradicate this, and then we are going to solve a major problem, food security problem for Africa. I would like to see that within my lifetime, and I think it's doable. Yeah. How important are the um, insects for a more sustainable world? They are very important in many angles. Um, they are important uh, if you manage them well. They are important in cleaning your uh, our environment. They are important in and being the, the workhorse in of farms that are important as food sources. I mean, all these uh, chicken that are sold as uh, organic uh, chicken that are free roaming in the, in the farm, what do they dig? They uh, go and dig and they pick insects. So you, you can mass produce that and produce bigger chicken. Uh, and more su in a more sustainable way. Uh, fishery, aqua aquaculture, uh, yeah, that also is also, insects can play a critical role in, in a more sustainable production system. Um, so I can go on and on. I think it's, it's, uh, they are really important, yeah. They're important in... in <laughs> but also in terms, because you want a more sustainable Africa? Yes, absolutely, yeah. So I think they, they have even more so here because we have a myriad of diversity of insects. As diversity of ecology, they, our ecological zones are big, there are varieties, there are a lot of different uh, plants uh, all year round. So a lot of these insects also, they rely on, on uh, plant sugar source as their thing. Uh, mosquitoes, so it's, uh, many people don't know. Mosquitoes, they don't just go and uh, take my blend and they live on that. They need specific also to sustain them, specific uh, plant nectar as source of uh, uh, sugar. So this, this is so uh, insects more so for Africa because of our diversity of ecology, diversity of uh, plants, diversity of, of things. Um, we just, we keep discovering new things. Uh, this year alone, we discovered and published our taxonomists and partners 15 different new wasps, which have never been uh, described in anywhere in the world. Yeah? And they are some of them. They are also beneficial because they, they feed on harmful insects. We have discovered also in, uh, in Bita, where we are going uh, tomorrow, um, one of our scientists discovered that um, there is a, a jumping spider. A jumping spider that is attracted only to um, mosquitoes that, that, have, that are filled with blood, with human blood. So, and they, they jump and they feed on those insects. If you give them uh, other insects, they, they wouldn't touch it. They go specifically for those type of mosquitoes. But they are, those mosquitoes, those, um, uh, that specific jumping uh, spider also requires a certain plant uh, sugar source to sustain it also between its meals, mosquito, blood filled mosquitoes. We call it vi vampire uh, spider. Uh, so what it means is also that if you keep those type of plants in your habitat, you are going to manage also to keep the equilibrium also, that you are maintaining the spiders that feed on your mosquitoes, that will be less mosquitoes to transmit uh, malaria. So our world is not in black and white. It's not in, uh, in boxes. It's all a continuum. 
So we have to manage it as a continuum to make it very sustainable and very natural um, for the, the, the future. So if you, if you cause imbalance to by eliminating a certain type of insects from or certain type of uh, uh, plants, then the, you are causing also an imbalance in your environment. Okay. What would be the way to go for Africa in this respect? I mean, you have, let's say, the European agricultural system or like the, the USA is doing that. Is that a way for mm -hmm. Africa to go for? Or to, what would you yeah. see? Yeah, that is a, an excellent question, but also a complicated question. And I, I so you can't debate it as a way, okay? You can't debate it as a way because one, so for example, 70% of uh, generally 60 to 70% of the population in, in Africa is engaged in agriculture. I don't think that is a smart way to keep that large proportion of uh, your population in farming. So if you go Europe, uh, North America and, uh, and Canada, you have about four or five percent of the population. So it is very inefficient to, to have 70% of your population to feed the rest. Uh, so this is not efficient way to do it. So we have to do it better. So also, but, but uh, I think technology, scientific technology alone is not going to do the trick. Uh, so we have to have the right policy. We have to have uh, the right uh, environment uh, to do these things. Why do I say policy? Policy is, is important in this because um, there has to be the right policy to land and access to land, access to resources. So if you take, uh, um, for example, many African countries without uh, uh, mentioning a specific uh, country, you have land, the farmers has, to begin with, very small land. So they have, a farmer may have six, seven children. Farmer dies, the six, seven children split the land. So neither one of them can make a living out of that uh, uh, pieces of, small pieces of land. So we have to have a policy to, to stop fragmenting the, the, the land to uh, small pieces because you cannot make a living out of it. You cannot transform agriculture with small pieces. You cannot uh, do a lot of different things also. So, uh, so th there has to be a policy also that is favorable to, to, uh, to enabling a transformation of agriculture. We should be able to produce more with, with less. Uh, so, and we have to make uh, ag our agriculture is more efficient in utilization. Uh, so, uh, also a large proportion of the, our farming system is rain fed. That's also uh, not a sustainable way to wait for rain, uh, waiting in the sky for a drop of uh, water to drop. Uh, that is not a smart way to do. And only 4% of the uh, arable land is, uh, uh, or the farm land is irrigated. And yet we have a lot of water flowing. Uh, we have a lot of uh, also water uh, being waste, wasted also. So there's a lot of different things that we have to do to, to, um, to transform our uh, farming system. So uh, having said that, it's, uh, it's not, I don't believe that one model alone is uh, the model for, for Africa. Uh, so it may not be the European model, but there are a lot of things we can borrow from, adapt from the European uh, 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 land policy, uh, access to this or our efficiency in, in farming uh, and so on. Uh, so it's, it's not a, it's not a, a black and white answer, I, I, I cannot give you that, yeah. But, but what I know is that we cannot continue keeping a large population of the, the, the our population, um, percentage of our population in farming. That's just not doable, yeah, or sustainable.
Can you imagine a uh, future where um, insect knowledge, knowledge about insects, will be sort of export product for um, Africa? Yes, actually yes. There are. Uh, Maybe you can repeat my question. Again. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Some, what, uh, what, what kind of future in, do insects have for? Yeah. So uh, can we use insects as, uh, as uh, can Africa use insects also as, as export product? Yes, absolutely. I believe so. Uh, this is not actually uh, even um, something uh, for the long run, but it's uh, already a short run. There are companies that are already um, uh, exploring to establish a plant here in Africa to uh, produce uh, mass rare insects for uh, feed to, to Europe and somewhere else. And so, uh, yeah, this is going to happen in the near future, actually. Yeah. Maybe uh, um, you can sort of okay, give a, a compressed yeah. answer yeah. Yeah. on how important insects are in terms of danger, oh, you know, me. like what you said, that yeah. many, uh, there are many deaths caused by insects and yeah. actually many more mm. deaths by malaria and by any, any other kind of, uh, mm. so, and, but also the beneficial thing, so a little bit of a sort of compressed kind of answer. Repeated to what yep. I said? Yep. Okay. So, if you would have to tell uh, a nice story about mm. what insects are meaning f do mean for us, what would be your storyline? Yeah, bees are very very important for 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 humankind. So we have to protect bees without a doubt. So we have to make sure that they are healthy and they live nice nicely, happily. And um, there are many ways to do that. So, and uh, uh, they need to have good pollen, plant source, and so on. So bees are number one. I think they, they are among the, the top, which we need to do. Uh, natural predators, predator insects are very important as well. Predators that uh, feed on harmful insects that are harmful to people, to animals. These are important as well. So, uh, but I think uh, we have to also pay attention and try to eradicate or find a solution also to uh, a myriad of uh, major diseases that are transmitted by, by uh, uh, insects. Mosquitoes, um, um, like uh, that, transmit uh, malaria, that transmit dengue, that transmit also uh, a number of other uh, diseases, both in animals and humans. Rift Valley fever and, and yellow fever, and a number of other diseases. Those are important. For Africa, sesame flies. Sesame flies are really critical. Many, many. Um, uh, fertile land, fertile land in, in Africa has become, uh, has been abandoned uh, by people because of the sesame fly inf uh, infestation. So these are also very important. All these things that I have uh, described, those are also focus for uh, ECP, my organization, to do. So these are some of the important yeah. things, I think, uh, with tick, yeah. We work on ticks also, uh, tick, ticks and tick-borne diseases. These are not just Africa problem, but it's also Europe, North America has a problem. And we have products in the pipeline that are very effective, natural products from, from plants, from other microbes within Africa. So I think the, the beauty of it is, um, is Africa it has a lot of uh, this problem, insect problem, but also a lot of also uh, solutions also for controlling this. So for all these problems that I have indicated, like the CSA flies, we have a product, uh, for example, which came from the wildlife, wild animals in, 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 in Africa. Somehow I have the feeling that um, your institute has a lot of 
hidden treasures. I don't know if that's yes, true. Yes, we but do. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah, can, can you repeat that? Yeah. And, and the CPA, I think, has a lot of uh, important, unique uh, uh, treasures uh, that, uh, that are not widely known. Uh, but I think uh, now uh, also uh, we are making a tremendous effort also to, for the rest of the world to know what we are capable of doing and what we have. So, and I think also, uh, I have to also indicate that uh, ICP does, it is uh, also work with a lot of partners globally. So we have uh, more than 300 partners in Europe, North America, Asia, Latin America, and elsewhere. Including the Netherlands, we have a lot of partners there also, so yeah. So. But how do you get these treasures into the world? Yeah, that is a critical, I think it's a critical to scale out what we have so that uh, uh, the rest of the planet can, and Africa can make use of what we have uh, at a faster rate. And that is a challenge, that's a big challenge, because the research organization is a research organization and it's very difficult for a research organization to scale out and to reach out to a global, a global forum, a global uh, uh, platform. And so uh, partners become very important and funding becomes important. So, so funding, our funding, we are not a government organization, we are uh, we are international organizations that happen to be based in Kenya. So the funding comes from a lot of uh, uh, sources. Huh? Yeah. So the European Union is among our largest uh, do investors, donors. Uh, the governments of, uh, of Germany, of Sweden, of Switzerland and the UK, uh, many foundations, uh, they, they provide funding for us to make a breakthrough and make a change. So I think uh, all these resources, I think, have to be uh, made available, not just for Africa, but for, I think, the rest of the planet as well, because this is also, we are using the funds of the taxpayers of Europe and, uh, and, uh, and uh, North America and so on, also to generate this, these things, these products, and uh, find solution for the constraints. A, a totally other question. If you mm. would have to describe your philosophy of life, what mm. would it be? Mm. How do you look to yourself and humanity in the future? Yeah. Philosophy of life. I think for me, uh, my motto personally is, and I tell my daughter also, I have one daughter who is going to be a scientist also. She just uh, joined the university in uh, America first year. So I, I, my motto is live life with a purpose, not just for yourself, but really to, to contribute to changing lives for those people who are less fortunate than we are. And I think we, there are millions of people who don't have the skills or the resources that we have. So it will be a tragedy for any human uh, kind to live for himself or herself. Like if I have a, a, a good life myself, uh, yeah, the rest is like, okay. Uh, so I think we have to, if we see a suffering of a fellow human being, we have to suffer together. We have to feel the pain. Uh, so, and I think if we have the means uh, and the uh, skills, uh, we should do it. We should make use of it. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. And can you see that science is changing because our knowledge is spreading well quicker than ever around the planet? Do you see that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether science is making a difference to the planet at a, a, a pace that we we want. Um, that is questionable. I, I, I don't have a yes or no answer. However, I know that our lives uh, have tremendously changed because of contribution to science. If you just uh, 
back several decades back, before the, the invention of antibiotics, before we had access to the first antibiotic, penicillin, which was accidentally discovered from a, a mold, from a fungus. That before that, people were dying from very simple, treatable things, from infection. Infections. Um, so uh, that is not the case anymore. Eh? So, uh, and then since the uh, discovery of penicillin, a lot of range of uh, antibiotics were dis discovered from microbes, from plants, from other sources. Eh? Uh, so yes, science has made tremendous uh, difference for uh, for us. The, the vaccines, uh, polio is uh, almost eradicated. Eh? Uh, so here and there only uh, vaccines. People were dying from a lot of prevent uh, preventive disease. But but the, the tragedy of it is even to this day, um, preventable uh, diseases are still killing people in the developing world. Eh? People are dying from infection because they don't have access to simple antibiotics or they don't have, they didn't have the means or the knowledge that actually they, if they vaccinate the kids uh, at, at a certain age that they will uh, prevent some, some of these uh, uh, diseases. I, uh, to this day myself, I don't know what I have been vaccinated. I don't think I have been vaccinated when I was, I was a kid. Uh, this is this is a world that we live. The the haves and the have nots and the gaps. So so, so big a difference, yeah. But but yeah, science has made a tremendous tremendous uh, difference in our lives, yeah. And I think it will continue doing it. But I think governments have to value uh, uh, science, uh, not only in Africa but globally, and do a significant investment also in in, in science and technology, also, yeah.